So today we're going to talk about radiometric dating or absolute dating and you have a worksheet that um, you worked on yesterday in class. I want you to take that out. Your homework will be radiometric dating, absolute dating. It'll be a homework sheet. Um, but your worksheet that you have looks like it actually looks like this. And this is the worksheet that you worked on yesterday in class. And we're going to go over these things. All right. So when we go over the notes, when we go over this today, these are your notes. This is going to help you, directly help you with your homework that you will have tonight. Turn all your right. Turn around. Turn around. Um, so when you're doing this, I want you to make sure you're taking notes on the side, you're drawing pictures. If we draw pictures, you're jotting stuff down, you're jotting things to help you remember, things that be clues, asking questions in class. If you're confused, stopping me, making sure you got it, because then your time to shine is when you do your homework tonight and that you're getting it right. I want 100% turnout on the homework because this is going to be your direct key. Also, if you're still struggling and you're doing your homework and you're doing this, what do you think you should do? Watch this video because it's going to be recorded so you can hear. Maybe if you missed something, you're dazed off, you got into La La Land for a minute or whatever the case may be, you still have that there. So you have the, all of that. I am going to be working on it from here so that I can enlarge everything um, that we see a little bit better. So with that being said, I need a volunteer to read the instructions for me, just the instruction portion. Jenny. Read the below information and use this information in your notes to complete the worksheet. Use the half-life elements to learn about radioactive dating. Excellent. Read the below information and use this information in your notes to complete the worksheet. Excellent. So we know what we're doing. A lot of this is comprehension. You have to be able to understand what you're being asked so that you know what exactly that you're doing. Move up. Move up. All right, can I get someone to read the first paragraph to me? Go, Kastasia. Most elements. Some elements, however, are unstable. That is, they change into a different element over time. Elements go, elements that go through the process of change are called radioactive, and the process of transformation, transformation is called radioactive decay. Because radioactive decay happens very steadily, scientists can use radioactive elements like clocks to measure the passage of time. By looking at how much of a certain element remains in an object, example, rock layer, and how much it has decayed, scientists have determined an approximate age of the object, rock layer. Okay. Could someone, that was wordy, but could someone break that down to me, what that's saying? What exactly does that mean? If you need to take a moment to read it, reread it for yourself, I want to give you about 20 seconds. Hold on one second, 20 seconds to kind of glimpse through it a little bit. So you can give us an interpretation of exactly what is that really saying? All right, hands. Duran. I don't want you repeating any words in there. I don't want you trying to paraphrase that paragraph. Based on your knowledge of what you know about radioactive decay and radiometric dating and half-lives and elements and fossils, tell me what that's saying, Bryson. So, Speak up. Speak up. Uh, radio, radioactive decay is just measuring how much of, uh, of an element is gone after a certain period of time. Okay. And how much of an element leaves after a certain period of time or decays after a certain period of time? How much of an element decays after a certain period of time? Half. Half, half of what? Half of the life. Half of what's left. Half of what's there after a certain amount of time. That's what happens. And in doing that, moving on to the next paragraph, um, who wants to read that? Go ahead, Ray. Um, so why are scientists interested in learning the ages of objects? By looking at very old things such as rocks and fossils and determining when they were formed, scientists learn about the history of the Earth and the plants and animals that live there. Radioactive dating makes, makes this history less impossible. A half life is the time that, is, that it takes for a half of a century for a certain amount of radioactive material to decay, and it, and it can range from less than a second billion, a second to billion years. All right. So, what 
is it that we are looking at to decay? What is it, Drika, that we're looking at to decay? Well, stable means that it hasn't decayed. decayed. Unstable means that it has decayed. But what is it that we are looking at? We're not looking at rocks and fossils to decay. We're looking at index fossils is where this process happens. But what are we looking at? The element that is located in the index fossils. We're looking at that. And we know that they decay. It's something about a steady rate. What does that mean? What does a steady rate mean, Quan? Like at a constant speed. It's at a constant speed. So it's going to happen that amount of time every single time. Half of it's going to disappear or decay at a same certain amount of time. All right. So here's the question. We kind of answer it here, but we need to be able to better understand that for our own knowledge. Why are we doing this? Are we doing this just because it's a science class and it's in the curriculum and you need to know it? Why do scientists really do this, Roger? Um, scientists. Well, we want to know that, but is that the only reason? Do we really need to know why it does? Oh, why? what's another reason why? But why? Why do we need to know that? Why? They do want to know about past life, but why? We can have an understanding of the present. Remember, the present is the key to the past. So we understand why organisms behave they be, what, the way they behave, why climates are the way they are, why there's climatal changes in different parts of the world. We need to understand that because who lives in the world now? Nice. We do. All right? Any questions about that? Okay. So as we move on in reading, your next question that you have here is, what type of fossil is used to determine the absolute age of... A rock layer. What type of fossil is used? Uh, Simon. Index fossil. So make sure on your paper that you write index fossil. All right. Any questions? We're all good so far, right? Yeah. Okie dokie. So now we have, just making sure I'm having the same thing. Now we have this information on your paper. And it says the chart below lists the half lives of some radioactive elements. Basically, this chart is talking about various, what? Elements, elements and their half lives. half lives. Now, the information that you do not need to really pay attention to are these numbers after each element. These are not necessarily important. That Those numbers just tell us in scientific terms, that they're isotopes, which means they have the capability to decay. We don't need to know that. The numbers that we are particularly interested in are these half-lives and which elements we're looking at. So we have bismuth, carbon, chlorine, cobalt, iodine, phosphorus, polonium, radium, sodium, and uranium. All right? Any questions about that? Okay. So now looking at the bottom chart, we notice that this chart is talking about what element? Radium, because it says it's right here, table of remaining radium. This chart is broken up, broken up into two sections. One section says this, the other section says this. When it says numbers of years after formation, what are we talking about? How many, the numbers of what? What's occurring there? Half-lives. Down here, this portion, we're talking about the percentage that is decaying, right? Okay, very good. Now, yesterday, we had to fix some things on here because we realized there were some errors. We noticed that at zero time, meaning no time has passed, we still have 100%. Then we noticed after radium's half-life, which is 1,600 years or 1,600 years, we have 50%. Another half-life occurs, which means we go how many years? 1,600. Do we end up with 3,200? Yes. yes. How much is there? 25% because half of the 50. Got it? Yes. And then we look and we see another 1,600 years has occurred. Is that this number here? No. No. So we need to fix that. And what do we get? 4,800. 4,800. We fixed that yesterday. And how much is there? 12.5%. 12.5%. 12 
and I, I'm, I want to put the percentage, but my pen is a little bit too big. And then we find out another 1,600 years occurred. Is that 12,800? No. No, that should be 6,400. 6, and then we have 6.25. 6.25. So here's the question. How much is left after that? 6.25, because we have half of this, which means half 6.25 decayed. We still have 6.25 undecayed or not decayed. How many half-lives have occurred? Five. Four. Four. Between <laughs> 0 and 16, this is one half-life. That's another. That's another. And that's another. How many have are occurred? Four, Four half-lives. All right? So we're able, to bet we're able to read this chart. We understand we got it going on. Correct? All right. So let's move on. All right, so now looking here, it says, if one gram of sodium has decayed from a sample that was originally two grams of sodium, how old is the sample? Now, I'm going to be breaking this down each step of the way because some people, some people are mathematically inclined where they can just see it and say, oh, bam, got it. I know the answer right there. Some people are not, and that's perfectly fine. Everyone's brain works differently. Some people are very good at math. My husband and I, we can go to the grocery store. He can add up all the groceries, which is why I like him to do it and knows what it is. I get to the grocery thing, and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to spend that much money because I just don't pay attention to it. I love numbers. I love math. I'm the word problem one. He's the number one. So this type of stuff fascinates me because I am a nerd. So that's that. Hey, However, hashtag nerds. Um, so I will be breaking this down because most of these is a process. This is why yesterday I said it's going to be difficult, but it's not going to be impossible. The reason why I said it's difficult is because a lot of you equate work with difficult, the fact that you have to put some effort into it. So I'm going to be breaking it down because you have to think through some steps before you can get to the final answer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So for some of you, you'll be like, oh, all you got to do is so-and-so. If you can do it your way and it works every time and that's easier for you, I'm not saying you have to do it my way, but if you're struggling... Look at the way I'm doing because I'm going to break it down step by step, okay? All right, so with that being said, <clears throat> looking at this problem, we know that we started with two grams. We started with how much? Two grams. Two grams. Two grams. We started with two grams of sodium, right? Mm -hmm. And ended with what? One, One gram. gram. One gram of sodium. So we started with two. We ended with one gram. It asks, how old is it? Well, let's ask this. How many half-lives have occurred? It went from two to one. So it's only went half one time. So only one half life. Right? Yeah. One half life occurred. How much time is one half life, Patrick? 15 hours. Because when we look at it, we're looking at sodium 24. So to find sodium 24, sodium 24's half life is 15 hours. So 15 hours is the age of the sample. Got it? Any questions for that? Doing good? What if it said it went from uh, one gram to, I'm sorry, two grams to half a gram? Bryson? 30 hours because that would be how many half-lives? Two half-lives. Half Everyone got that? Some people get caught up because it says if one gram of sodium has decayed from the sample originally, too. you got to pay attention to that wording that's there. So far, so good. Okay, we can move on, right? Okay. Remember, that's what I said. This number, those, you don't need that. That's not interfering anything. That is just the identity of the, um, like the last name of the element, if you will. Not necessarily, but it's just a tag along to the element. It has nothing to do with the numbers of half-lives or the numbers of um, how much is there or anything like that. Okay? I'm good? Excellent.
<clears throat> All right, so moving on to our next one, number three. Number three is now talking about not percentage, but a fraction. So the question asks us, what fraction of chlorine remains undecayed after 200,000 years? Now you can show your work. When, I, when you raise your hand, I'm not looking for the answer yet. We need to be able to explain it or break it through. You can or break it down. You can show your work two ways. Or you can explain yourself or get the answer two ways. One, you can word it. Or two, you can draw a picture. All right? So for this, I'm going to draw a picture just because sometimes pictures are a little bit easier to understand than reading a bunch of words. All right? So in the very beginning, we start off, because they're talking about fractions, we start off with, that's not a perfect circle, but all right. We start off with a whole piece or a whole amount of the chlorine, correct? Within the index vessel. It, what is the half-life of the chlorine? 400,000 years. 400,000 years. Okay. So, here's the thing. In 400,000 years, what would happen? Half-life. Half now, this is what would happen. I'm going to highlight it in yellow. If 400,000 years occurred, this would be 400 thousand years right mm -hmm. how much time actually occurred 200,000 years what is that okay so good you might need to write that down 200,000 years is half of the 400,000 years which is half life Okay, what are you confused on? 200. 400,000. We're not done yet. I'm just, I'm just breaking it down. So we know that 200,000 years is half of the 400,000 years. If 400,000, let's, let's break it. If you still are confused afterwards, let me know. But if 400,000 years had occurred, this is what we would end up with, correct? Mm -hmm. But 400,000 years did not occur. How many years occurred? 200,000. So what the concept you need to understand is after 400,000 years, it doesn't just say, all right, half is now, we're just leaving. How many of you have ever left food on the counter, in your room, in a bag, in your lunch bag, in your book bag, anywhere except in the refrigerator where it should be? Does it decay or mold over time? Yes. All right. Now, let's say an orange has a lifespan of a piece of bread. Let's say a piece of bread, for that matter, has a lifespan of a week. All right? So let's say after a week, it's going to be totally molded. Does it mold daily, or is it at that weak moment, now it's all of a sudden molded? Molded daily. It molds daily. Same thing with index fossils or elements. It molds or decays daily at some percentage or some amount. So therefore, after 200,000 years, which is half of its half-life, how much of that is going to decay? Okay, hold on one second. How much is that going to decay? A half of whatever that half is there. So after, what happens is I'm going to do this in orange. If I can get to it. There we go. So I'm going to highlight that in orange. So over 200,000 years, which is only half of the 400,000 years, only half of the half is decayed. It will take another 200,000 years for the entire half to be decayed. All right? So therefore, looking at that, what is the fraction? The question asks, what is the fraction? What's the fraction of the undecayed? amount after 200,000 years. Seven. Simon, sorry. Three-fourths is not decayed. We put this here, the orange equals 200,000 years. 
So if only 200,000 years have occurred, you have three-fourths undecayed. If they asked how much decayed, what would you say? One-fourth. One-fourth. Everyone good? It's a fraction, though. If this, remember that if after 400,000 years, half life, half is going to decay. Mm -hmm. We start off, I'm going to write it over here. We start off with the whole. If 400 years goes by, 400,000 years goes by, this is going to all disappear. That's not going to be there. But 400,000 years did not disappear. All right? Mm -hmm. Only half of the 400,000 years occurred. So only 2,000 years. So over time, what was happening? Over time, goodness gracious, I can't get this mic to work for me. Over time, only 200,000 years were passing over time, which is half of that 400,000. So the time was going, time was going, time was going, time was going. Get 200,000 years, decay stopped. Well, it didn't stop, but at 2,000 years, this is how much would decay. If time was to continue, it would keep going and keep going, 200,000, 201, 200, all the way until 400,000 years. Okay. All right? Good? Question of Quran? So, the day after something dies, it decays. It starts decaying because you have no life. There's no life there. No, there's no rejuvenation of elements. What happens is every living thing is made up of elements. We get our elements through the earth. We know that we breathe in oxygen. We know that we also breathe in some carbon dioxide. We eat meat. We eat lettuce. We eat all those things. Those things have carbon in it. We get that. We get nitrogen in us through, excuse me, we get nitrogen in us through the nitrogen cycle. So we're living life. And living life means that we're taking in these different elements. Once we're dead, we're not taking in those elements. They're starting to decay. And they're instead leading away from us. The moment you die, decay starts immediately. Yeah, not, not, now you won't look at you like, ooh, he just, just decayed all the way. Goodness gracious, the most decaying <laughs> person I've ever seen. But oh, you no. start, decaying is a process, and it's a slow process where some things only for half of it to decay is 400,000 years or 1 billion years. It's a, it happens immediately, but it's a slow process. I don't know, because we have so many elements. All right, yes. Carbon is waste, but we are made up of a lot of carbon also. We're aging. What happens when you get older? Your skin starts to drop. Your bones start to get a little brittle. That's why they come up with all these ingredients and lotions and stuff, adding elements back into your body and try to keep it looking vibrant. Yes. Last question, and we're going to go on to number four. Why does the hair decay? Hair, your hair is already dead cells. Anyway, yeah. That's why you can't feel it. When you pinch your hair, you can't feel it. That's broken off ends. That's what they're talking about. But you can't, if you pinch your hair, you can't feel it. Same thing with your nails. You can't feel them. If they pull your hair, but if you pinch your hair, you cannot feel that. All right. Moving on to the next one. Number four. Now this was a little tricky, but it wasn't impossible. All right. So the question is, well, the statement and then the question, an archaeologist finds a piece of old bone, stop clicking that thing, that she believes may be 200,000 years, 200, I'm sorry, 2,000 years old. The last, first of all, this thing that she says it may be 2,000 years old, 
What is she giving us her what? She's giving like a hypothesis. She dug up a bone. She's saying the, the problem is how old is the bone? She's saying she's been working a while. She's probably saying it's probably about 2,000 years old. Can she go with that? What does she have to do? She has to research. And she has to find some information. So what do you think she does? She goes to the lab technician. She goes to the lab technician who's able then to look inside the bone and find the element that's there. Because the bone is the fossil. Jamie, over here. Don't worry about that. The, ele the bone is the fossil. So therefore, they go within the fossil and they figure out the element that's there. What element does the technician say is there? Carbon. carbon. So carbon is in there. It's in the bone. The technician's able to determine that 25% of the first half-life um, has completed. Only 25% of it. Does the finding support her belief about the age of the bone? Why or why not? What is the question really asking us? Patrick. Is, uh, is that it? I mean, I mean, no, nope, that's not what the question is asking us. Drew. Nope. Bryson. Is the bone 2,000 years old? That's what the question is asking. And if it is, why? And if it isn't, why? It's asking why is she right or why is she wrong? Okay? So then the first thing we need to know is, so the archaeologist finds, I'm trying to make, make sure I break this down to you correctly, so, or not correctly, but understandably so that you get it. So it says an archaeologist finds a bone, um, an old bone that is 2,000 years old. Um, the lab technician tells her that the carbon... Um, in the bone has completed 25% of its first half life. So, we need to know what then? Why are we saying a fourth? You don't see a fourth in this word statement. 25%. We need to use the words that are there so we don't confuse ourselves or anyone else. Now, if you can figure it out that way, that's perfectly fine. But let's use the words that are actually there. So, we need to know what is 25% of, it says, of its half-life. What's um, carbon's half-life? 5,730 years. And we got that from here. Because carbon's half-life is 5,730 years. So we need to know what's 25% of that those years, right? Do we know the math term is over a uh, percent over 100? Good. So this is what we're going to use. And this is what I use in my daily life when I'm figuring out bills and figuring out different things. I learned this back in your age, and I still use it. All right. So therefore, what is is? Do we know is? Yes. No. Five hundred thirty. The question is, what is? So do we know is? Yes. No. No. We don't know is. Is is what we're looking for. So is becomes our variable. It's our x. We don't know what it is. Do we know the of? Yes, yes because it's right here. Of 5,730. 5, so we know that that's our of. Do we know our percent? No. Yes. yes. Better not say we don't know. Everything. We don't need to argue, though. We don't need to argue. And we know that that's over 100. So then we cross multiply and we divide. So then we know that we have 100x, 25 times 5,730. Who has a calculator? Okay. Take it out. I can tell you what it is, but. I want to know just what 5,730 times 25 is. Yeah. I don't want to know the whole answer. I just want to know that. What is it, Eddie? Turn this way. Then we can go further. Divide each side by 100. I need to make this. Software X. We divide the 1,400 
1,400, I'm sorry, 143,250 divided by 100. We move the decimal point back two spaces. And we get 1432.5. I didn't add that. Listen, Drika, when I asked for the answer, I was asking for what is 25 times 5,730. That wasn't the right answer you were giving me. Our final answer, x equals 1,432.5. What is that? That's not all. That's 25. That's the is. That's the is. But what is the is? The is of what? Uh, so what, what unit should go on the end of this? Uh, years. 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 So what does this really represent? The years, the half-life. That's not the half-life. Half-life is 5730. Shh. It's 25% of the half-life, so what is this still telling us? No. Stop, stop it. Stop it. Read your word problem and then tell me what this represents. What is this, Bryson? This is the age of the bone. So was she right? No. The, um, turn around this way. It says, does the finding support her belief about the age of the bone? She believed it was 2,000 years old. Is she right? No. no. She is incorrect. Because it's not 2,000 years. It's 1,432 and a half years old. Doesn't matter. That's not the question. It's, was she right? No. Any questions about that? No, because that's not what it's asking you. If you were breaking it down for yourself and you want to do that, you can do that. But as far as getting that answer, you have to find you still have to find out what a fourth or twenty five percent of the half life is. So you can figure out how old it is. Got it? Yeah. All right. Moving on to number five, which is on the back. Now we're looking at this chart. And again, with this chart, we do not necessarily need to know anything about these numbers here. All right? We just need to know those half-lives, and we need to know um, which one they're talking about. Now, don't cross them off, however, because some questions may say uranium-238 or uranium-235. So you need to know which uranium it's talking about. Now, here in this question, it's asking about a fraction not a percent, a fraction of the original carbon remains in the rock layer after 11,460 years. Now, the way that I would break this down is I would put, um, maybe make a little chart, yeah. put time, put amount, just like question number one had a chart. I would do that. So over zero time, and remember, we're looking at carbon-14, so we're looking here. Over zero time, what is the fraction that we have? 100%. A fraction. A right? whole. A whole. We just got a whole. One whole. One over one. One whole. A half-life would be what? How many years? 5,730 years. What fraction would we have then? The stage you get up. One half. Are we done yet? What what time span are we trying to get to? 11,460. So then over another half life would be what? 11,460 years. What would be the fraction? Two fourths. Two fourths. One fourth. One fourth. One fourth. One half. One a half of a half is what? One fourth. One fourth. 
again, if we look at a, a, a little chart, this is half. If we break that in half, this becomes a fourth. So we got that? Okay, good. Some of you may have to draw a picture to see it if you can't. Are we done? Well, we're done seeing what it takes up to there. So now the question is, what fraction of the original carbon remains in the rock layer after one-fourth? One so the answer would be one-fourth. Got that? All right, any questions? Okay. I guess they're fixing something. I'm about to tell them that they need to turn it off because it's hot. All right. Um, the next one. How old is the sample that contains 25% of its original potassium? So again, can we use a chart? You can use a diagram, a little circle, or a chart. I'm going to use a chart because the chart just seems to work a little bit easier for us. So again, we'll say time. And we'll say amount. But this time we're dealing with fractions or percentages? Percentages. So over zero time, what percent of this potassium 40, this is what we're looking at, 100%. What is the half-life of potassium? 1.3 billion. After 1.3 billion years, what percent go, yeah, that we have? We have 50 percent. Are we done yet? No. What are we trying to get to? No, what are we trying to get to? 25%. So, after uh, 1.3 billion years, we have another half-life. How much is that? 2.6 billion years. Is everyone with me? Please raise your hand if you are lost. Okay. So now what percentage do we have? 25%. 25%. Are we done? Yes. So it says... How old is the sample that contains 25%? 2.6 billion years old. Here's a question for you that's not on here. How many half-lives occurred? Aaron, two half-lives. You got one here and one there. Got it? Going from here to here and here to there. All right? Okay, questions? Are right, we getting a little bit more difficult? Because now this one says, how many years would it take for a rock sample that is 1,000 grams of carbon to decay and only have 1,000, I'm sorry, 125 grams of carbon? We can use a chart here also, right? Because but this time, instead of it telling us a, a whole or half, we actually know what the whole is. We are going from, are you okay? We are going from how much amount to how much amount? We are going from 1,000 grams to 125 grams. So we know we start with, this is where we start, and this is where we end. Okay? So let's do a chart. We no longer have to say we have a whole, we have a half. We know exactly what our whole is, which is a thousand grams. So we'll still put time and we'll put amount. Right? Over zero time, how much do we have? One thousand grams. And we're looking at what element? Carbon fourteen. What's a half-life? 5,730. Good. How much will we have after 5,730 years? 500 grams. One second. One second. 
No, it says 125 grams. That's exactly what it is. Are we at our desired amount yet? No. No. So we need to go on. After another 5,730 years, how much time has lapsed? 11,450. Now, if you don't know that that, where we got that number from, if you're looking at it later, you want to be able to say plus 5,730 is going to equal this. Okay? How much do we have now? 250 grams. Again, this is half of this. All right? In case you are not aware of where we got that from. Then again, we need to add 507, 5,730 so we can get this number here, which is going to give us... 17,190. Thank you. How much are we going to have? 125 grams. Are we at our desired amount? Yes. This is the desired amount that we're looking for here. That's what we needed to end up with. But the question says, how many years would it take for the rock sample to get to 125 from 1,000? So the answer is 17,190 years. Got it? We're good, right? Okay. Now... I want you to take a moment, for some of you that did not do it yet, and look at number eight on your own. I'm going to give you about three minutes to look at number eight. Try it out. Start it. Stop writing on that table. See what, how much you can get done of it if you didn't start it already. And then we're going to come together and we're going to do it. Yes. Not in the middle of instruction, no. You'll have time in a moment. Still got about a minute and a half to work on your own. How many of you are still working? Okay. Well, you can trade me fences, put it in there and take this one. Put it in here and take one of these. And then you, when you bring me my pencil back, then you can get this one back. You're going to get one of your glasses cleaner. All right. 
Look up here. Jamie, sit down. Now, with, I'll wait. This is an in-depth word problem. It's not just something that you can just jump right into and just get the answer. You do have to do some figuring out because we know we start with We start with two. We start with 128 grams. And end with 2 grams in how many days? 24 days. All right? So we know that. That's what the word problem is telling us if we couldn't read that through. Because it says after 24 days, 2 grams of the original 128 sample remains in a rock layer. So the question is, what is the half-life of the sample? Here, we don't know. We don't know what the half-life is. This is why they don't give us an element. Because we don't even know what the half-life is. We have to figure that out. In order to figure that out, we got to do a couple of things. First, we need to find out What? We need to find out. We know how many days it took total, 24 days. Twenty four days. Exactly. We need to know how to find out the number or how many, find out how many. I don't want the answer, Drika. That's not where we're interested in. We need to know how to get it. We need to know how many half-lives occurred. That's one thing we need to know first. After we find out how many half-lives occurred, that doesn't tell us what the half-life is. It just tells us how many have occurred. So how do we find out what the half-life is? What do we do then? Roger. Add. We know that it takes 24 days total. We divide. The second thing is divide 128 grams. We know that that's going to decay to what? Half of 128 is 64 grams. This 64 is half of the 128. Hey! 
Listen to what I'm saying. Just clearly as explaining it for people who may not be caught up. The 64 is half of the 128. All right? How many half-lives have occurred here? Just one half-life has occurred. All right? Are we at our ending amount? No, we're not at our ending amount. So, we know that 64 grams now has to decay into 32 grams. How many half-lives have occurred? Two. Two. Are we at our desired amount? No. No. So 32 grams has to decay into 16 grams. How many half-lives? Three. 16 grams has to decay into 8 grams. How many half-lives? Four. 8 grams has to decay into 4. How many half-lives? 5. And then... Four grams has to decay into two. Two grams. Is that our desired amount? Yes. How many half lives? Six. So what we know is we know that six half lives have occurred. Right? Yes. We do not know, I'm gonna highlight this in like a green color. We do not know how much time is in between each decaying process. That's what we need to figure out. And you tell me that we divide the total number of days by however many half-lives we have, correct? Yes. So we're going to take our 24 and we're going to divide it by 6. This is the number of half-lives. These are the number of total days. When we get that, we get 3. 4. 4. four. four. For what? Years. Days. 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 What does the four days represent? The half point. No. The half life of the sample. Raise your hand. Raise your hand and tell me what does that mean? We say the half life is four days. What does that mean, Drika? What thing? The element. The sample of the element to decay. So we would be able to say to go from 128 grams to 64 grams, it takes four days. Four days. From 64 grams to 32? Four days. Four days. From 32 to 16? Four, four days. From 16 to 8? Four, four days. days. From 8 to 4? Four? Four, four days. From 4 to 2? Four, four, four days. And if you added all of these up, you would get the number... 24, a total of 24 days. Any questions about that? Okay. And I am going to be passing out your homework to you, which you'll be able to use, uh, I'm sorry, do during class. I'm looking for 100% participation um, and effort with your homework. There should be no one that has not turned in their homework. Your homework that you get is going to look like this. What does this look like? It looks like the exact paper that you have in front of you. However, do not get confused and think that, oh, it's the same, so I'm just going to write down all the same answers. That's not going to happen. It's the same format so that you have the notes that we just did to help you understand what we're doing. But now you're applying your knowledge because there's going to be different elements in there. So you have to use your same concepts that we just used in class and your knowledge and your notes so that you can... Complete your homework front and back. Any questions? Yes. Okay, hold on one second. Then I'm going to go ahead and pass your homework out to you. Christasia. And once you get it, you may begin. I want you doing it by yourself. And this concludes this lesson.